What's up guys, welcome back. Quick brow update. It's actually healing surprisingly well. So I didn't show you the wound in the last video when it happened because honestly guys, it was pretty serious. It wasn't just like a cut, like a normal cut. It was probably the worst cut that I've ever had. It was not only super deep, but it was wide as well. Like it looked like, like a mouth almost. It, it, it looked like, you know, when the boxers or M MMA fighters bust their eye open and it's like it's like this literally and you can see like the meat inside that's how it was like i was like pushing it like this and it literally looked like it was like a mouth talking it was pretty gnarly that's why i didn't show you guys i decided to save you the gore and save myself all of the go get stitches comments because i'm not really into all that boys unless it's very very serious i'm not going to the doctor for pretty much anything but yeah, I just put on one of these uh, butterfly band-aids. You know, wash it in the morning, replace the band-aid, and it's been like three or four days, and it's already like sealed up, which is crazy. Also, I'm wearing a back brace. My back is still not 100%. It is getting better, but let's be honest, my back has never really been 100%. Check this out, though. Oh, sh Your boy finally got the new welding setup all sorted so we got the lincoln 140 hd pack i got all my random supplies down there and then we got our tank which was pretty much the last piece to the puzzle that we were waiting for so pretty stoked she's all filled up i've actually welded a few things not not too much but just to get some practice with the whole MIG setup and using gas because if you guys are familiar with the channel, you know the welder that I had before the Lincoln was a Harbor Freight Flux, I think it was a Chicago Electric, the cheapest of the cheap, I think it was like 120 bucks. And we got a lot of stuff done with it and we kind of like learned the basics of welding, but uh, it was just time for me to upgrade guys. We're also getting into more serious things as far as the build goes, like putting a cage in the car. I kind of wish that we had the MIG welder when we were holding the front end on the car, but hey, sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. The front end is on there, it hasn't fell off yet, so I think she'll hold. Today, we are going to be beginning the mock-up and cage prep for Miss Parker. So here I have a few of the pieces to our new cage. I don't have all of it in the garage. I just brought out basically what we need to get started. The rest of the cage is in the house and I didn't wanna bring it all out to then have to bring it all inside when we're not really gonna need it until a little bit further in the process of installing the cage. So yeah, the plan for today is to basically, it's a pre-bent kit I bought, but uh, there is some fitment, some trimming, some notching that needs to go into it. So the first thing I wanna do is just get it into the car, or at least, yeah, I just wanna fit it into the car just to see, for instance, the main hoop. I want to see if the height is dialed in where it's at or if we're going to have to trim the legs, you know, and get all of that information before we start to actually weld the cage in. I want to get a little bit of knowledge on how things are going to fit and get a better idea of how things are going to fit before we start making plans to install it. So today is just going to be simply mocking up and prepping the car for the cage. And then in the next video, uh, we'll probably start to, you know, weld the cage in and whatnot. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the main hoop thrown in the car with the seats still in the car because I wanna check where my, uh, the holes for the harness and the seat line up to the main hoop. So that way I know where to put the crossbar. I don't wanna put it too high or too low. And then we put the seats in and you know, after the entire process of putting the cage in the car, we realized that the angle of the harnesses is incorrect. So I just want to get the main hoop thrown in the car with the seats in, take some measurements so that way I can make sure we put the harness bar in the correct location so that way everything is lined up properly when we put the seats back in the car. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then after that, we'll pull the seats out, throw the halo in, throw the A-pillar bars in, just to kind of get, again, an idea of how they sit, if I need to trim any, if I don't need to trim any, because all that stuff I want to do, obviously, outside of the car before we start to get it all thrown in for good. But I'm going to quit talking. We're going to get to work. Get excited, boys. 
I'm stoked. We are finally beginning the journey of putting a cage in Miss Parker. I think removing the passenger seat is going to be the easiest way to go about doing this. So once we get the seat out of the car, we'll bring the main hook in uh, through this way and uh, take our measurements based off of the driver's seat. The passenger seat is pretty much identical. So that way we'll get a solid idea of where the crossbar on the main hoop has to go. And then uh, after that, we could pull the driver's seat out and keep pushing. Gotta love the lightweight racing seats. All right, here we go. Attempting to get the main hoop in the car for the first time. I don't really know how this is gonna work. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Oh! Oh shit, boys! Alright, hold on. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness! Hold the phone. It's a perfect fit. Dude, check this out. Fire me up right now. So, that's sick because one of the things I had in question was whether or not the legs on the main hoop were cut to size or if I was going to have to trim them. And now that we have the main hoop in the car, the answer is that it's cut to size, like it's perfect. Look how close it is to the roof. It was super snug to get in here. Obviously I have to like even it out between both sides and this is not the angle that it's gonna be going in completely. Based off of the main hoop fitment, I am stoked. So also too, what's dope. So if you look here, here's where our, our actually let me sit in the car, hold on. All right, so here I'm sitting fully upright in the seat. And as you guys can see, my shoulders are about, I don't know, maybe an inch or so, an inch and a half above the lower line on the harness hole on the seat. And where I plan on putting the crossbar is right here, like right after this bend, right after the bend on the bottom side, which would line up literally perfect, pretty much perfect with my shoulder. and. Uh, that's sick so i'm not going to go into detail on harness angles and all that but there is specific angles for it to be correct so i think right here we're looking good so that was all the testing i needed with the driver's seat in so now we can get the driver's seat removed from the car and continue to mock up the rest of the cage or at least the pieces of the cage that i have out here today but hell yeah boys we got a cage in miss parker kinda sorta not really all right, I got the halo mocked up in the car right now, holding it together with a ratchet strap. And uh, this is the perfect example of why I wanted to mock all of this up before, for instance, like before I just put notches at the end of the halo because I believe that the halo, the legs on the halo are too long. So here's something that I didn't think about, but I don't really know how far forward the halo is supposed to go i think what makes sense to me is about there kind of following the curvature of the roof right there you see that i think any more forward would kind of be weird because then it would be like over or underneath but the windshield and i don't think that's where that's supposed to go i'm gonna have to do some research just to make sure but on the assumption that this is how far forward the halo has to go so it just sits with the uh, edge of the roof like that look how far back the legs on the halo go so right now i have the main hoop pushed way back it's just uh attached by this little bungee cord right there so it doesn't because i think it will fall backwards and uh and look how much leg like for instance look right here how much leg is passing that now the main hoop will be kind of like right where this pillar's at pretty much. But still to not, you know, when, you, when we notch the pipe, we're only gonna take about half an inch off. And you can see here, we have about like three inches too much, I think, 
Again, I'm not 100%. This is my first time installing a cage on a car ever. So just like everything else, uh, my knowledge right now is very minimal. But again, just like everything else, I will do my research. I will get some more information and we'll get things figured out. But as of right now, I believe that the main hoop is good. The main hoop is solid the way it is. I think we're going to have to trim the halo, the legs on the halo, before we notch it to fit the main hoop. So yeah, that's, that's my assumption. But I was kind of expecting us to have to, you know, trim some things and adjust the tubing uh, a little bit in order for the fitment to be dialed. Oh man, the bumblebee just flew through the fox body. You guys aren't going to see it. I don't know why I'm trying to film it. But, uh, oh, there was a bumblebee in my last video too. Shh, that means they're out here, boys. I don't know why. Yeah, so there's that. We're going to have to trim the halo to get it dialed in. But no big deal. It's a learning process. I'm excited, honestly. I'm stoked to be partaking in this journey that is installing the cage on my race car. Like, I think that's pretty sick. We've made it this far. Like, drop a comment down below if you guys have been watching the videos from the beginning when I first picked up Miss Parker. Did you think that the build was going to escalate to this point? Drop a comment down below, let me know. And also keep in mind that we're still in the baby stages of this car. As far as like my goals long-term are, uh, I want this car to be a complete beast. And I mean, she is a beast right now, but I'm talking about like real serious later on down the road. But yeah, all right. Next thing I wanna get test fitted is the A-pillar bars. So let's get those things out. All right, so once again, this is just a very rough mock-up because the fact that the halo is not sitting exactly where it's going to be basically means that the fitment of these A-pillar bars at the moment don't really matter, but I just wanna see how close they are, and maybe it'll give me a better idea of where the halo is supposed to go. So, here we go. Probably not the best for my back to be crawling up under the dash, but I just wanted to make sure that we weren't pulling on any wires. It's looking more like I'm going to have to do piece by piece and uh, adjust and modify each piece accordingly, like a puzzle piece, you know? Uh, so once we get the main hoop exactly where it's gonna be, then the next piece to the puzzle would be the halo. We'd take our measurements, put the halo exactly where it's gonna be, and then, you know, get to the A pillar bar, so on and so on. Which I guess that's just how people do cages. Like from all the videos I've seen, that's typically how it goes. I just wanted to, I guess we're doing what, what I wanted to do. I wanted to fit this whole thing up to kind of get this knowledge under my belt of like, okay, if we are gonna have to step by step put this cage together, not just throw it in the car, tack it and be done. So. Yeah, this is going to be a process, boys. I'm stoked. Man, man I really wish that the A-pillar part looks sick, though. Look at it from the back. Even though it's at the, it's at the incorrect angle. You know what? I feel like it should be kicked over to the left a little bit more, too. Like, look how much gap is between the A-pillar bar and the window. Let, hold on, let me see something. All right, so by the looks of it, I think this little trim here for our speaker. I don't know if you guys can see the lights blowing it out. Uh, we don't have speakers anymore in the car, obviously, but uh, the tube is hitting right here. So I think if we just trimmed this out, right, and I'll, I'll trim the least amount of material as possible, but I believe if we just trim this out, it will allow the tube to come way more over to the left, which would put us closer to the pillar which is where I want to be because right there, uh, you guys could tell it's just way too far tucked into the car. It needs to be pushed out more towards the pillar, but it looks pretty damn cool, man. 
We got a lot of work. We got a lot of work ahead of us. But we're gonna get there. Just like we got here. Slowly and surely. But dang, look at that. We got a freaking from here. It looks good. Can't really tell that it's all not fitting correctly. It looks dialed from here. It's freaking sick. I'm stoked. Since we learned that we're gonna have to install this cage piece by piece, I went ahead and took the A-pillar bar out. I took the halo out and I decided to move forward with, uh, how do I say, progressing in the installation of the main hoop. If that makes sense, I don't really know, but let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So I got, this pained me a little bit to pull all of our nice carpet out, but uh, that's all right. I'll just, once we're finished with the whole cage, I'll put the carpet back over the main plates and just cut a hole for the tubing and you'll never even know. But basically what I got going on here, I pulled the carpet so we have access to the sheet metal on the floor. And then I picked up this one inch by one inch square bar from Home Depot. And basically I have it, just 90 degreed or L'd in the corner. So it gives it, basically it's giving us an exact placement of this tube, one inch away from the sidewall and one inch away from the little rear wall right here. And then same deal on that side. So now we're basically just going to outline the bottom of the main hoop leg onto the floor of the car so we know exactly where it's going to end up in its final form and then i'm going to go ahead and drill the hole saws out of the floor so they're already done and then uh from there we could just put the plates in just slide them in so the main hoop doesn't fall through the floor but uh at least the holes will already be there all right i got a pilot hole in the center of our little stencil here so what we're about to do is take this two and a half inch hole saw, drill it through the floor. So that way, once we have the whole cage put together, you guys know how the process goes. Then once you tack it up and weld the bottoms, you have to drop the cage through the floor to be able to weld the tops of the cage. And then you raise it back up, put the plates in and weld everything back together. So here we go. You know what makes me nervous though? is this power cord right here. Let me get something to block that. Give me a second. Change the angle up on you guys a little bit just because of the cardboard box that I put here to protect the power cables uh, would have been in the way and you guys wouldn't have been able to see what the heck was going on. So here we go. Hold on, my bad boys. Second guessing myself. I just want to make sure we're in the center. Should be able to work this guy out now just like that sick there you have it we have the rear holes hole sawed through the floor we also are gonna have to do the same thing up in the front for the a pillar bars but obviously we can't do that until we know exactly where the A-pillar bars are going to go. Uh, we knew, or we now know exactly where the legs for the main hoop are going to go. That's why we were, we were able to, uh, you know, make our marks and cut our holes out. I also already got that one done over there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you guys can see it. Boom. So both our holes are cut, which is sick. Uh, well, this is not the plate we're going to be using. This is a spare plate, but it's a good example. I can show you guys basically Boom our plates will go in like that And then our cage will sit on top of that or the main hoop You know what I mean? And then when we're ready to weld the top of it, we'll slide these out the way Drop it through the floor weld the top lift it back up slide these back into place. Well, I'm gonna cut a round piece of sheet metal weld that onto the floor of the car then put the plates into place boom tack the plates in 
weld the bar or weld the tube, the leg of the main hoop to the plate, and then we can move on. Same deal on that side. So, yeah, pretty sick. I gotta clean all this up because now we got little metal shavings all over the place. But yeah, we're making progress. Rad. There's really only like one more thing I wanted to do today as far as cage prep goes, and that is to cardboard up the interior windows. Not all of them. I'm not gonna do the doors because I'm gonna have both the doors wide open while I'm welding in the car. But uh, our little quarter mirror, quarter windows back here, obviously can't be, I mean, they can be taken out, but I'm not gonna take them out. So put some cardboard on those. And then I also want to get the front windshield covered in cardboard. So I haven't done that yet. And uh, we're gonna do that right now. So here's what we got going on. I got the cardboard on the front of the window. As you guys can see, I'm kind of tracing out the outline of the windshield kind of just like peeling the cardboard back seeing where it's at and then drawing a line same deal here kind of like just looking where it's at drawing a line unfortunately I didn't have a piece of cardboard big enough to cover the entire windshield but I do have two pieces so we're gonna have to cut a piece out of that and attach it to this piece in order to make one full unit and uh, yeah so I'm gonna keep sketching this guy out cut it out see where we're at all right, there she is. Freaking professional. So, uh, oh, I gotta trim that little corner there. But yeah, after I trim that little corner, we should be good to try to throw her into the car. So let me grab some scissors real quick. Let's get this bad boy into the motherfucking car. All right. Get this bad boy in position. Oh, damn it. I forgot about my rearview mirror. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to make some cuts. But well, we're looking pretty dialed here. Not even gonna lie. Let me go grab them scissors again. You guys ready for this? Freaking professional. Oh, I was just making sure I was recording because I, I just one shot at that, boys. Sheesh. Your boy is nice with it. I said your boy is nice with it, bro. You just gotta taper up. Damn, I'm pretty impressed. That was that was pretty good. It took me a few tries to get the triangle dialed and I knocked this thing out pretty much in the first go that's sick so we're just gonna tape it up and call it a day I'm stoked this is gonna be a sick little journey and when we're done with it we are gonna have a cage in Miss Parker like she just continues to amaze me and become more and more of a beast and as I mentioned in the beginning of this video and plenty of times in previous videos this is still just the beginning like we've came such a far away but in my head this car is going to be like I, I've said it before like I have a, a long-term goal of making this an eight second car like I, I want this car to be a consistent eight second car long term eventually we will get there but for now you know we're just gonna chill and uh, have a good time but yeah that's gonna be it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to hit the like button for me Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because the next video we're gonna probably start welding some things. You know what I'm saying? And you definitely don't wanna miss that. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Be easy.